A ground effect vehicle or GEV, also known as a winging ground effect or wig craft, or ekranoplan, is a vehicle that can move over the surface by gaining support from the reactions of air against the surface below. These vehicles typically cruise over a level surface, usually over the sea, by making use of ground effect. GEVs can provide solutions to niche markets such as island hopping, coastal transport and reconnaissance, operation in remote areas without runways, and so on. In this video, we will look at some of the design considerations while designing ground effect aircraft. Although this video does not cover the details of the design, it can be a good starting point while designing a GEV and coming up with the initial configurations. First, we will discuss the motivation behind designing GEVs and the benefits they provide. If you want, you can skip directly to the design consideration section using the timestamp in the description. So, why design GEVs at all, if there are amphibious airplanes and ships already? Consider these research data illustrating the increase in efficiency while flying in ground effect. The links to the research are given in the description. Ground effect vehicles require less thrust, and hence they are more efficient. Theoretically, they can carry more payload due to the extra lift, while saving fuel. Sustainable aviation itself is a huge motivation to consider ground effect vehicles. Unlike conventional airplanes, GEVs fly close to the surface to exploit the ground effect and do not climb to higher altitudes. These vehicles generally have small wings that generate enough lift while in ground effect, but this lift is insufficient to fly at conventional airplane altitudes. On the other hand, conventional airplanes can be flown close to the ground to increase their aerodynamic efficiency, however, their design is not optimized for ground effect flight. Consider two wings moving through the air, one of which is high above the ground and the other is flying close to the surface. In the second case, as air is directed downwards and pressurized by the wing, the fixed surface acts as a boundary which traps the air. The result of this is a cushion of air and creates additional lift. When an aircraft flies, it has high pressure under the wing and low pressure above it. This creates lift. Air moves from higher pressure to lower pressure region and thus, there is an interesting phenomenon at the wing tips. The air under the wing tries to move to the upper side of the wing. This creates a swirling motion of the air, which are called wing tip vortices. These are bad for the efficiency of the aircraft as these vortices require energy to form, and they increase drag. This type of drag is called drag due to lift or induced drag. All aircrafts must pay this price for creating lift. This is why passenger aircrafts have winglets and have longer wings to reduce induced drag. GEVs fly close to the surface, and thus do not let the air to swirl to the upper surface of the wing. Before the vortex can be formed, the moving air hits the surface, which creates even more lift. Now, let's look at the design considerations to keep in mind while designing a ground effect vehicle. Different wing configurations have been used in the development of GEVs. The three major types are the Ekranoplan, the Reverse Delta, and the Tandem Wing. Like with aircraft in general, there isn't one exact configuration that all ground effect vehicles follow. The reverse delta configuration was made famous by Dr. Alexander Lipisch. The design had anhedral reverse delta wings with a stabilizing tail. This design can be seen in today's GEVs like the Airfish 8 and the Flying Ship Company's Wig Craft. Then there is the Ekranoplan configuration, which was designed by Rostislav Alexiev. It works by having the main wing in ground effect while another wing at the rear, which is out of ground effect, stabilizes the craft. This can be seen in the Caspian Sea Monster and the A90 Orleanok. Gunda Jorg developed the tandem wing GEV configuration. These craft are incapable of flight out of ground effect and have limited seaworthiness, however they are stable over their operating range. Some of the notable design features that can be seen on GEVs are their characteristically small aspect ratio of the main wing, the addition of end plates and floats, and unique fuselage hull shapes to allow them to take off and land on water. Here are some of the major differences between conventional aircraft and GEVs. Some reasons for the differences in the two designs are as follows. GEVs can be heavier and can carry more payload than comparable conventional aircraft because of the extra assist they get from the surface. They usually have anhedral wings because these are better at trapping and maintaining the cushion of air. If anhedral wings are not used, they employ end plates. They have large stabilizers to maintain the balance of the GEV so that its nose does not tip over due to the high lift produced by the wings. Also, GEVs do not have to move as fast as airplanes to get the same amount of lift, and large stabilizers are better for maneuvering at slower speeds. Engines are placed away from the water so that the salt water does not affect them. GEVs require floats and specialized hulls for water takeoffs and landings. They have small aspect ratio wings to make them more compact for turns and because they are not greatly affected by wing tip vortices. 
Just like flying boats, GEVs have a hull-shaped fuselage bottom that acts like a boat hull while in water to provide buoyancy. During takeoff, as the aircraft gains speed, the buoyancy of the hull is gradually replaced by aerodynamic lift of the wings in the air. However, with increasing hull speed, comes an increased suction force at the bottom of the hull. This results in a negative hydrodynamic lift. This makes it harder for the aircraft to take off. Therefore, the bottom of most flying boat designs consists of a backward-facing step. This helps to break the flow of water under the hull and decreases the suction effect. That is why the design of the hull is an important consideration for GEVs. During takeoffs and landings, the interaction of water with the hull might result is spray. For GEVs, spray should be well controlled to protect the propellers and avoid ingestion into the engine. Spray hitting the wings, tail, or propeller can also slow takeoff. Thus, a properly designed four-body bottom and spray strips are required to minimize these problems. A suggested four-body cross-section is depicted in the schematic. The beam is defined as the width of the fuselage. Several significant limitations of GEV's vehicles must be noted. They are specifically designed to operate within half a wingspan above the surface, where the ground effect is most pronounced. Beyond this height, the ground effect quickly diminishes, and the vehicle's efficiency decreases significantly. GEVs need large bodies of water or flat surfaces for takeoff and landing, further restricting their operational envelope and increasing vulnerability to weather conditions such as strong winds and high waves. High sea states associated with water spray and large waves can impose high loads on the wings and fuselage structure. Large quantities of water ingestion into the engines can also cause surging and significantly increase the risk of power loss. Despite these limitations, GEVs can be viable for maritime surveillance, coastal patrol, and high-speed transportation over limited ranges. If you are designing a GEV, I think this wing and ground effect review will be helpful. Another resource is this research survey of the different types of GEVs. The links for these papers are in the description. If you found the video informative, please give it a like. For more videos on aircraft design, subscribe to the channel. You can check out these videos next for more on aircraft design. Thank you for watching.